Hello everyone. Imagine I have a select HTML file. It has a couple of options. Option one has no value, but a placeholder, something to show to the user. In this case, it says select the car. And then we have a real options. A user can select BMW, Mercedes, Audi. Maybe they're buying a German sedan. Who knows? It looks like this, right? Just a drop down dialogue in this case. So what the user really wants to do while writing this test is to confirm these options. If you want to confirm, for example, the text for value B, we can do it. So in this case, we want to select the car list by ID and then option and then the attribute value equals B. So this will give us this particular element. We can confirm that uh, should have BMW, for example. We run this, perfect. Has our expected test. But what if we want to confirm all the text from all the elements, right? Like from each one. We don't want to write separate things. I mean, we could, but it would be unwieldy, right? And we would change this to M and then A, like, well, we don't want to do it. So in this test, I want to grab all option elements from the select. Right? So if we do this, then it gets us all four. If we open the dev tools, we can print those options. Right? These are HTML DOM elements. So if we get the element, somehow we have to get the text inside. So what we can do, we get all these options. So in this case, it returns us a jQuery. So I'll say options. And what we want to do is grab the text, the inner text from each HTML element. So what we will do, we'll say Cypress low dash map and we'll say options and from each option we're gonna say give me option in a text. Okay, so we're just iterating through every DOM element using low dash map method and then we do the inner text. Why am I using low dash? Why not just use plain jQuery iteration, right? Because this will convert the result back to jQuery object and we just want a plain array. Okay, so we can do that. We get something, but we are not showing anything. So why don't we, for example, print it? Console log, just to make sure we are on the right track and doing the right thing. So if you rerun this, notice we're getting the inner text from the option element. Now, we really don't want this placeholder, so we can remove this. So we'll say then, you know, we'll get a list and we'll say list filter and we'll say as long as the string is not select car. And we can again print it to the console just to make sure we're doing the right thing. Okay, so we get the free results and let's say now we'll say should equal and this is incorrect, but just bear with me and we'll give an array of results and we can say BMW, Mercedes, Audi and and right now it says expected to equal and to me this look equal, but remember in JavaScript arrays and objects are compared by reference, right? In this case, the reference will be different, even though the contents of array is the same. So if you want to compare arrays or objects, you really want to use assertion deep equal. This compares the insides of the array. So in this case, it's correct. Now, the one thing that's kind of annoying is that, let's say you misspell Audi and you say Audis. When this fails, it's fine. All right, it's, uh, it's you, you can see why this is incorrect. Uh, sometimes when you use deep equal an array is um, slightly longer, then you will not see the array actually stringified. Okay, so let's see if I can recreate this situation in place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, see, like right now it says array 5, and let's see, uh, 
one more time. Okay, so you see how here the arrays are not printed, right? Because they're way too long. So if you really want to see what's going on, you have to actually open the DevTools and either click on the assertion to see them or use this print to console button. Okay. And I actually like print to console button because it just prints the things into the console. Notice it prints the expected array and actual array so you can inspect them and see what's going on. If you click on assertion, it also pins the dumb snapshot, how the app looked at that moment, which might not be what you want to do. You probably just want to see the error. Okay, so we can see the actual objects and arrays right there. So let me remove my code. And one other thing that I really, really want to or like doing is not comparing the arrays like that, but instead compare the sorted arrays. Okay, so if we get an array right here, I'll say invoke sort, which right now will break, right? Because we want to sort things. To me, sorting the expected result and sorting the array is a little bit more stable. Even if we add more items, we don't have to add them in the right place and a bit like all the assertions and everything, right? So sorting is a little bit uh, more convenient for the future.